Gazgul is on suicide watch. Gilliman is in the ICU on a drip. Launch the Black Crusade. Wow, this is incredible. I've never seen such an amazing data slate. This is take two. Tried it the first time, had my cat in here, didn't work out, too distracting, kept losing my train of thought. So he's gone out now, I'm going to try this again and hopefully it will turn out better. Um, my friend sent this to me at work today. It, I, I looked at it in the canteen at work, I was laughing like an idiot. Um, this has made me so excited. I have to contain myself today because it's one o'clock in the morning, gone that now. My second recording, so it's about half one in the morning now. Um, people are asleep, got to be quiet. But... Oh man, this is this is incredible. I'm so excited. We just got to talk about it. No preamble, nothing. Let's talk about it. So his stat line itself is it, it's just a beast already. He's you know movement six, not hampered by Terminator armor at all. Movement six, weapon skill BS two plus obviously. But one thing that's interesting is he's now strength and toughness six. He was five and five, uh, while Gilliman was uh, six and six because he's an actual Primark. Abaddon said, I don't care. I don't care, Gilliman. I'm Flint and Toughness 6 now. Stay back there in 8th edition. <laughs> um, so this is amazing. He's Flint and Toughness 6. 9 wounds. He's gained a wound from 8. Um, 8 attacks, though. Um, overall, less attacks because of Death the False Emperor nonsense, where he'd get it on 4s potentially and re his own hits and stuff. It's crazy. He'd get a lot of attacks. Um, but 8 attacks base is very solid, especially for 9th. Um, leadership 11, which is interesting. He's... <laughs> <laughs> very convinced that he's uh, on the right path here. Um, the Talonophorus shooting attack, you know, it got a bit of a buff. It's always been pretty rubbish, just being a combi bolter. Um, it's now Assault 4, 24 inches, Strength 5, AP minus 1 damage too. So it's okay, it might kill a couple Marines here and there. Um, they're going to ignore the minus 1, obviously, but it's still it's okay. Damage 2 is the main thing. D3 was a bit rubbish. Um, and in the close combat phase, it's Strength user, so Strength 6. AP minus 4, damage 1, so it's got a good AP, and the bonus is that it makes two, two hit rolls for each attack. So he'll, he'll be making 16 attacks, which is brilliant. Um, you know, not amazing, but for chaff clearing, he gets you know stuck into a bunch of walks or something. It's very nice to have that chaff clearing option. Nobody likes that expensive super character getting mobbed down by chaff. So that's a nice little function. The main thing, of course, is Drachnien. Uh, Drachnien is plus 3 strength, so strength 9, base. AP minus 4, damage 3, and it also does D3 mortal wounds on 6s to wounds. So this is the main thing, this is a real beat stick. 8 attacks with this is amazing, it's very very good. <laughs> but to be honest with you, the main uh, the main point to excitement is not even necessarily how killy he is, it's how amazingly survivable he is, and also what quite a good buff character he is. He's got a lot of special rules. Um, one thing people might be upset about, and you've got no reason to be upset, this is incredible. Uh, my friend said to me earlier, you know, Gilliman on Suicide Watch. I've seen on the internet already, Gazgirl on Suicide Watch. Everyone's on Suicide Watch. Everyone's on Suicide Watch because this is amazing. Um, <laughs> he has lost the 12 inch Fearless Aura, um, you know, which, you know, that was a useful ability. But it also tended to just turn him into a cultist babysitter that just sat in a big blob of cultists. So, and that's not really how you want to use, you know, the war master, right? So this is, you know, it's an okay change. I can lose that, especially for the bonuses that he's got. So the Mark of Chaos Ascendant is his first rule. Uh, it's what it's always been. All four marks squished onto one guy, <laughs> like a big stamp on his forehead. Um, the Mark of Corn is the same thing you've probably already seen with the Berserkers, where they get plus one strength um, if they charge, get charged or heroically intervene. Um, so he's strength 10 functionally for at least the first round of close combat or any subsequent charges. Um, so, you know, he's strength 10 with Drachnian or strength 7 with the Talon. Uh, that's very nice, gets a good bracket to be in strength 10. Um, the Mark of Zinch. Um, allows him to um, essentially ignore the first hit that he takes or the first damaging hit that he takes. Uh, the first failed save, um, whether it's you know shooting or close combat, um, the damage characteristic is reduced to zero. So that's incredibly frustrating if you're trying to maybe hit him in a duel or something. Um, if you know, it's like the same the uh, the parry rule that the um, uh, the swarm lord gets. If you you just it's annoying to fight somebody knowing that they're going to ignore the first wound that you do to them basically. Um, so that's a good rule, very nasty, especially for a character like this. Um, the Nurgle rule 
It's very interesting. It's the first rule I've ever seen worded this way. Um, it's a very, I was just, I was about to go off on this, this whole wrong explanation. I read it wrong, well I didn't read it wrong, but I interpreted it wrong myself. So let me read it properly and then we'll talk about it. Um, each time an attack is made against this model, if the strength characteristic of that attack either equals or is at least double the toughness characteristic of this model, subtract one from that model's wound roll. So, you know, if you're less, it's not going to affect it. It's just going to wound on fives or sixes. If your strength's six, you'll be minus one. So it will, you know, it will go from fours to wounds to fives to wounds. If you're greater than his toughness, nothing will happen. So you'll still wound on a three plus. But if you would have been double and about to wound him on a two plus, um, you'll only wound him on a three plus. So this is a very, I, I'm not a fan of the way it's written personally. Um, I think they could just have said, you can't wound him on better than a 3+. plus. I think that's what they should have just said. Um, it's basically the same what Archeon has in fantasy. But anyway, um, I think that would have been a simpler way of writing it. But it's it's okay. It just might need a bit of um, a, a bit of discussion with your opponent to make sure you both know exactly what it is, because it's a bit fiddly. But functionally, you aren't going to wound him on 2s. <laughs> and if you were going to wound him on 4s, then it's probably now 5s. So it's good. It definitely helps with his survivability. And then the last one is finesse, which is fights first. This is amazing. Just fighting first is incredible. It's already a strong ability for the Empress Children, but the fact that this is on Abaddon, probably the most powerful character in 40k now. Never mind uh, nobodies like Mephiston. Never mind Drago. Never mind Gilliman. Never mind uh, <laughs> Gaskell. Nobody. He is the king. He is the war master. That's the end of it. Now... Um, <laughs> he has the Dark Destiny rule, which is the 4 plus and vulnerable save, um, and he can't suffer more than 3 wounds per phase, so he doesn't half damage anymore, but he only suffers 3 wounds per phase. This is not one of my favourite rules, I'm not going to go off on it in this video because it's unrelated, well, you know, for this video it is. Uh, not a fan of this rule personally, however, it seems like all the main sort of beat stick characters are getting it, so, you know, it's good to be part of the club. You don't want to be the one left without it, like Gilliman is basically at this point. <laughs> Although I'm sure that when he does get a reader of rules, he will also get this. Um, it's, you know, I didn't like it the first time I saw it with the Catan when they gave it to the Nightbringer and stuff. But um, now they're giving it out to more people, you know, it's all right. I just, it, it, I get, I feel like I don't like it from a game perspective because it makes, you know, dealing with models awkward. But I like it from a narrative perspective that you, when you take these big powerful characters that really do have the potential to just one round the other one, um, you, it's disappointing to have this clash in the middle of the battlefield and then one of them just dies before it even gets to attack probably. Um, the way that this allows you to have this this proper duel, this proper sort of slugfest where these two titanic characters are just going at each other in the middle of the battle while the army fights around them, I do like that. So, you know, it's okay, take it or leave it. it it's more, I feel for me, it's more of a narrative rule than a, than a, than a gameplay rule. Um, then you've got the War Master. Now, previously, the War Master gave you 2 CP, I think. Um, it now basically gives you, you have to be the Warlord, of course, and it gives you the Agent of Chaos keyword. Um, so, Abaddon can now be fielded in any Traitor Legion, um, which is brilliant. It's what I wanted all last edition. It really sucked that I had to. Uh, if I was playing my Iron Warriors or whatever else I was playing and I wanted to use Abaddon for the rules basically because he's good um, It sucked that I had to actually play Black Legion uh, Which wasn't the worst Legion, but it wasn't you know Iron Warriors or whatever either So now um, you really you really can just just plonk him in any army if you're playing word bearers or Alpha Legion or Iron Warriors you can you, you can still have Abaddon leading you which um, from a gameplay perspective, it's brilliant because he's a very powerful character. <laughs> I expect most people will want to use him. And narratively, it's perfect. You know, he is the War Master. He will basically commandeer whatever army he wants. If you've read something like the Night Lords trilogy with Aaron Dunsky Bowden, he pretty much turns up, shoots Talos in the chest, and says, That's it. You know, you're going to work for me for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, I personally am a fan of Avalon. A lot of people aren't. Um, I will be thinking narratively that my Iron Warriors are happily allowing him to commandeer their little um, company and fight for him because, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, a proponent of the Long War. I think it's good stuff. Um, so this is a great rule. Then he's got the Despoiler. 
uh, which is the it's the standard reroll ones to hit aura. You know, sixes for core reroll ones to hit chaos lord type aura. But it also gives you plus one to move. I've seen orc players crying about this already. I don't know why. Um, they've already got just flat reroll charges, <laughs> which is brilliant. But no, orc players are upset because Aberon gives you plus one to charge. Um, this is really, really, really good, um, especially because he's probably. For a lot of people, for me normally, a deep strike character to come down with Terminators, although having seen the new Obliterators, which I'll do another video on tomorrow probably now, um, the Obliterators are very good. And I can see Abaddon and Obliterators becoming a very strong combo. Um, so this is really great. Plus one to charge, you know, brilliant. Um, and then his last rule, he's got a lot of rules. His last rule is Lord of the Traitor Legions. Because he is the Lord of the Traitor Legions, he's the War Master. And he's in charge of everything, he's the King. <laughs> um, I love him. So in your command phase, uh, select one friendly heretic Astartes core unit. It's basically chapter master rerolls. Okay, it's the it's the choose a unit. Um, it's either a core unit or a character unit, and they reroll hit rolls. However, it's even better because if you choose a black legion unit, they can reroll wound rolls as well. So he can put this on himself and be the absolute king of the duel, <laughs> rerolling all hits and wounds. Or you can put it on another powerful squad, you know, maybe Havocs, if they're core, I'm not sure yet, don't know. Um, maybe Obliterators, I doubt they're going to be core, they might be, and if they are, that would be very powerful. Um, I'm not exactly sure what core is going to be yet, I'm hoping Havocs are, I really am hoping Havocs are, because I want the evil ones to hit for the Iron Warriors, um, but you know, we're not sure yet, we'll see. But still, even if there's not a good choice for core, because you can't put it on anything useful, Although I'm sure that these Terminators will be. So if you have a nice Terminator unit, you know, you can it. But for me, this is going straight on himself. And he is going to kill whatever he touches. And then probably survive the return firepower. <laughs> because he's very uh, durable now. now. That's it for the data sheet. Um, <laughs> this, this, is, this is amazing. It's a wonderful data sheet. He's 300 points. I can't remember whether I said that earlier already or not. But he's 300 points. I think that's a steal. That's a really good price. Um, I've heard some people say it's too much, you know, a bit pricey. I don't think so at all. You know, considering you've got to shell out 300 plus, you know, 380 points or so for um, Gilliman, considering Gasgore himself is 300 points, I think you're getting a lot more for your points than either of those characters. Um, he's definitely at least on par with some of the Demon Primarchs, I think. Um, he's an incredibly powerful character. This is, um, I, I think that, you know, I mean, he always was the type of character you saw in most lists, uh, especially if people were playing Black Legion. I think that now that you can stick him in any Chaos Legion, you're going to see Abaddon in not every game exactly, but probably almost every game, because 300 points is very good. I could see it going up in the future. I could see it maybe going up in a chapter approved, that sort of thing, 350, something like that. But let's hope not, because that would be a shame. Um, I haven't got too much else to say because I want to do another video on other units um, probably tomorrow now. It's getting late. I want to just get this one out there. Um, he's amazing. He's really amazing. He's such a beast. He's the king. He is the war master. Yeah, a lot of people don't like him. I know a lot of people don't like him. I love him personally. I've never stopped loving him. I know that from Major Kill to other people on YouTube, everyone's making videos crapping on this poor man. I think he's a beast. I love him, <laughs> and I, I just I love that he's got amazing rules. I can't wait to use him. There's a lot of negativity coming. I will I will warn warn you. Um, I, you know from the rest of the codex, a lot of stuff I'm not a fan of. Um, but this definitely I think is going to help um, balance the scales. So if I'm whinging about terminators or something like that being ruined, um, at least Abaddon's good. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to leave it short tonight. I could ramble on about this for ages, saying how, how amazing this is, how great Abaddon is. The Chadbaddon, I love him, um, but I'm not going to. Let's keep this short. So thanks for watching if you did, and I will be back hopefully tomorrow with at least Obliterators, maybe more, because there's a few leaks out there that I want to talk about, um, and some other reveals I've got to talk about. So anyway, goodbye for now, and thank you.